how two 18-year-old girls from LA ended up in a Peru prison. Two Los Angeles acquaintances, Krista Barnes and Jennifer Davis, thought it would be easy money to fly to Peru and obtain cocaine from two people there. Hello everyone and welcome to your favorite channel. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update. They were each promised $5,000 to go to Peru and bring back the cocaine on someone else's pay. Even better, they were reassured that nothing would happen. Not everything went as planned. Minutes after landing at Lima Airport on their way back to the United States, customs authorities swooped in and broke through the false bottoms of their baggage with knives, revealing their secret cargo. They planned on spending a week in Peru, but instead, they have been waiting for punishment in an overcrowded women's prison on the outskirts of Lima for the last 17 months. Against the backdrop of a Peruvian prison, these two young, apparently average American women, stand out, although they are not remarkable. At the Chorillos Ladies Prison, these women are among a group of eight other attractive young Americans serving time for acting as barriers, drug mules. Additionally, they contribute to an upward trend in the international drug trade. Peru is the world's second largest producer of coca, the raw material for cocaine, and has the most successful interdiction campaign. According to drug policy expert Ricardo Soberon of a Lima-based NGO, the Peruvian Air Force has significantly hampered drug-carrying planes' ability to fly between Peru and Colombia in recent years. Now, traffickers are using non-DHL flights to deliver their wares. When shipping smaller items to the United States and Europe, Mr. Soberon says they increasingly depend on barriers, who are mostly women. Blonde 19-year-old Miss Barnes and brunette 20-year-old Miss Davis, who both seemed like they could walk the runway, set out for Peru with the goal of saving enough money to buy presents for Christmas, fly home for Thanksgiving, and have a little more for themselves. According to Barnes, the Peruvians assured him that the procedure was commonplace, that there were specialists, and that they were paid well. The prospect of being found out never even crossed our minds. We had no idea any Americans were being held in connection with this. We had no notion what barriers were. To be quite honest, we were completely oblivious to the worth of a pound. When I say ignorance, I mean a whole and total absence of information. Barnes and Davis had grounds to suspect that they had been set up because of how quickly they were detained and how quickly the media were on the scene. According to certain investigators, it is not uncommon for one trafficker to eliminate many barriers simultaneously to avoid being stopped. They provide the authorities with false information about one mule. Barnes and Davis are no longer roommates, but now occupy a cell slightly bigger than the two of them together. In their cockroach-infested apartment, they shower with cold water from a pail and toss and turn all night. They are responsible for their own supplies, such as toilet paper and soap. Many, though, claim that caring for their loved ones is the most difficult aspect. Davis answered, They are actually suffering, but her voice fades into the oppressive courtyard as her face flushes with a want to cry. It is expected that Barnes and Davis will spend eight years in jail and pay a large fine. They may pay the money to be transferred to a US prison, where they will almost certainly get superior care and have a greater chance of being released early. On February 11th, they had their first hearing, and they are expected to be sentenced in March. Barnes and Davis made the next worst choice by cooperating with the police during their questioning. That was their second worst mistake in history. It takes more time to investigate and pursue legal action in Peru for every additional person a defendant names as a possible witness. Davis thinks that previous collaborations led to the group's present situation. New detainees should stay quiet until they know their roles. If they want to capture the big players, they should promote participation, not penalize. Barnes and Davis confessed to wrongdoing and demanded punishment. These people are also victims. Despite their efforts, they may find another American prisoner. Barnes says, We were taken advantage of, but this was typical for the persons involved. They seek obstacles to jump over. Young and foolish like us targets 18 to 23 year olds. This is it, everyone. Let us know in the comments what you got as a lesson from this story. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that. Also, put on the notifications because the next video is going to be a great one. Great.